when everybody wants to get this hot body, right? We think, okay, I got to eat these foods. I got to do this exercise. There's always a gimmick. There's always something that you can do effectively. One piece that most people are forgetting is this mind piece, because we all operate in these conscious minds and these subconscious minds, right? So your conscious mind is the one that said, this is my goal. I want to look this way. I want this amount of weight, whatever. But your subconscious is programmed differently. It has a whole story that you may or may not be aware of. Hi, everyone, and welcome to this episode of the Mind Valley podcast. Like many of our podcast episodes, this is being recorded in front of a live audience. Today, I have uh, my dear friend, Danet May, who is the author of a beautiful book coming out from Hay House. It's called Embrace Abundance. And that's going to be the topic of today's conversation. I've always noticed something about Danette. Life just seems easier for her. She is in incredible health. She was a fitness trainer, a Miss Bikini Body winner. She has been a successful entrepreneur running a business on health and wellness that at its peak was doing over 20 million in revenue. She's a remarkable speaker and I've put her on stage multiple times. Everything in Danette's life seems to grow and shine and magnify so effortlessly. And so I think if there was someone I would ask to write a book on abundance, the net would probably be quite high on my list. Because of her ability to teach people, she's got millions of fans following her on Facebook and Instagram, and her ability to practice what she preaches and apply it to a life in terms of love, in terms of health, in terms of money, in terms of success and fame. So Danette, welcome to Mind Valley. <laughs> Thanks so much, Vishen. And I have to say, You've been an integral part of my education on this idea and this concept. I've listened to you talk about it. I've watched you implement these strategies in your life. And I just want to say thank you to you because you've been someone that I've looked to as well in this journey. Thank you. I'm uh, well, firstly, I'm honored to have said that. I know we've been in so we've had so many conversations in the past. We've had so many interviews together. And so, yeah, I'd say we've been, you're one of those people, um, that I would rate highly in my life because we learn from each other, right? Whether it's business yeah. or growing um, our, our, our reach or now, congratulations for joining the, uh, the author club and getting this book out. Tell us about the book, Danette. What is Embrace Abundance about? Yeah, so Hay House had approached me right before everything happened in the world that we're labeling the pandemic. And they were like, we want you to write another book. And I wasn't even sure if I wanted to write another book. And they, and I said, and they go, do you know what you want to write on? And I said, what would you want to hear from me about? And they were like, we are so fascinated how you've gone from $47 to five years having two eight-figure businesses, now to three eight-figure businesses. How are you doing that? And you have good health. You seem like you have really magnetic relationships what are you doing? And people want to know, like, what are these steps that you're doing in your life and all the different gamuts of this idea of abundance, not just financial abundance, but living in your purpose, having health, having fun times, relationships. And I was like, I'm going to write a book on this and I'm going to share the small little nuggets that I do daily to really see and witness the abundance that I believe is for everyone's taking that wants to open their eyes and step further into this concept. So that's what I did. And I just wrote it all out and did it in really small nuggets. And that's what Embrace Abundance is. So I take it you, you look at abundance and manifesting from the spiritual as well as practical side, right? Yes, absolutely. How would you say your idea is um, different from, say, conventional ideas of law of attraction, like from that movie, The Secret? You know, I actually think, you know, I'm a big fan of The Secret. I think that I heard that probably like 10 years ago really helped shape my life. It was like a concept that came into my life. There's been things that I've added that are a little bit different um, to The Secret. Like a lot of times what I thought about at the very beginning was, oh, if I do a vision board or if I, <laughs> if I just see it in my mind, then it's going to bring, become in my life. And then I started to notice as I was adopting things bigger than just having good times and a really great relationship and a good body was that 
business required a different level of this. And I was like, okay, what is this? Obviously I have to have strategy, I have to have work. And I always love this quote that comes from the Bible. I think it's from the Bible, but <laughs> work, faith without works is dead. And I really believe in this concept of really flow work and inspired work, not just this eight to five grinding work, but when you're in inspiration and getting out of this idea of balance, because when I'm in inspiration, I'm working probably longer than people would say was healthy, but I'm in inspiration, I'm in this flow. And so really operating in a new level of awareness around what's in inspiration, what's feeling like you're breaking down a wall and not in, you're not in joy and, and operating in that and getting rid of these ideas that you read about in books, like the 10X and all the things that probably people you've been promoting, but I just don't actually buy into. So, so let, let's, let's start with, with manifesting help, right? So tell us about the journey there, because one of your earliest books was called Bikini Body Recipes. Tell us about that journey, because you're a mom of three, and yeah. I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, but you're, you're a mother of three, and I believe you won Bikini Body, Miss Bikini Body when you were close to 40. Yeah, I, okay, so yeah, I'll tell this story. <laughs> so That's an amazing story. Yeah, you know, I, and then once again, I used, I was, the whole time I was prepping for, it was the Bikini Worlds, and I had never done any fitness competitions, and so I knew I had to do the biggest one that was going to be aired on ESPN, because if I didn't, then I would find a way to get out of it, so I, I scheduled for the Bikini Worlds, yes, I was approaching 40, and I had lost my son. So I have three children, but I lost my son. So I had gone through a really deep depression after losing my son and really was in this space of like, okay, I understand the power of healing foods, but I also know this world in the fitness world, which is these bikini stages and these fitness stages where they're not actually doing it very healthy. And can you use your mind and can you eat really healing foods without depriving yourself and still win and look amazing that was my ultimate goal with this because it was a misconception in the industry that it was actually really unhealthy so i set out with all the recipes that i had already created to eat these foods that were really healing that i felt really invigorated i was still able to be a mom and operate in business and have my brain functioning on full tilt and and as well as harnessing manifestation. So I was reading Wayne Dyer's book called Intention, The Power of Intention. The whole time I was prepping, to me, it wasn't about just food prep, exercise, learning to walk in high heels, or learning to get the right bikini, but it was around the power of intention, the power of your mind was going to be the thing that put me over the edge to really qualify and be in the first. So I would visualize how I was standing on stage. I would visualize the judges seeing my body different than someone else's body. Because I have to tell you, when I arrived at Worlds, there were no joke, 150 girls from age, they don't put you in an age class. It's like 19 to 50. I was like, how are the judges even going to know the difference? Like, I can't see one non-hot body in here. <laughs> and I was like, this is nuts. Like, how are, how are they even going to differentiate this? And so when I was on stage, I was like, I know the power of my mind is making these judges look at me differently because there's no way Susie to my right and Lucy to my left looks any different than I do. <laughs> and I, that's why I really think I did so well. Plus I was eating really great foods and I think I just had a really deep mission and purpose behind it. So, so, so that, that's really interesting though. So you spoke about Wayne Dyer and the power of intention applied to the body, applied to health. Yes. Let's go a little bit deeper for people here who are looking to bring in mind over body practices. What are some tips? What should we be looking at? Mind over body. Okay, so when you, when everybody wants to get this hot body, right? We think, okay, I gotta eat these foods. I gotta do this exercise. There's always a gimmick. There's always something that you can do effectively. One piece that most people are forgetting is this mind piece, because we all operate in these conscious minds and these subconscious minds, right? So your conscious mind is the one that said, this is my goal. I want to look this way. I want this amount of weight, whatever. But your subconscious is programmed differently. It has a whole story that you may or may not be aware of, whether that was a story that, hey, I'm 40. How am I... 
I mean, most 40 year olds look like this. How am I going to look like this? You know, and so it has this limiting belief, right? Um, or I've had three children or five children, like I have this extra skin. How, you know, so it's these limiting beliefs in the subconscious. So what you want to do is really look at where has any of these subconscious beliefs been imprinted? My age, right? How many children I've had if you're a female? Um, operations, maybe injuries in your body. These could be limiting things that are going to show up in the subconscious. Um, maybe genetics. A lot of times women and men in particular, we, we grow up age five, six, we hear our aunts and uncles talking in the other room about being big boned in our genes and how we have a hard time losing weight in our family. And that gets imprinted whether you recognize it or not. So looking at those past subconscious beliefs and rewiring them. And how I rewire them is I actually play an audio tape every single day. Now I'm on autopilot because I create them in my programs where you are literally rewiring that story, going back to a neural imprint where maybe that was subcon uh, subconsciously imprinted and rewiring that story. So rechanging that story. And that has been why I believe my programs have been super successful for people and myself is because we're not just working on the physical and the conscious part of our brain. We're hitting that subconscious piece, which is allowing us to get over the self-sabotage that happens whenever you start to see results, right? Because that happens, you start to see results and then you've got to work on that subconscious or you'll go back to old patterns. This, this, this is so interesting, right? Because it, it, it begs the question, how much of aging is the mind, is what we believe? So here's an article from the New York Times, and um, you guys who are listening to this on the podcast can search for this. What if age is nothing but a mindset? Okay, so I'm pasting the link to the article right now in the chat for those of you who are live with us. So I'm going to pull it up. Perfect. Yeah, and but, but this is basically what the article suggests. It was a study done by Ellen Langer, the famous psychologist. The study was done in 1981. She took a group of men who were like in their 50s and 60s. And for five days, she recreated the 1960s, so 20 years before. And they had to live in these house with 60s wall art, with 60s television programs playing on the television. They had to interact with each other as if they were, they were young again. And what happened is in five days, they actually started showing signs of reversing age. The, the belief or even pretending that they had gone back in time literally made aspects of their biology go back in time. The full article you can find uh, on the New York Times. It's a, it's a beautiful article on this particular study, but it begs us to ask the question, how much of, of aging is actually determined by the mind? And we are, we, are, we are seeing so many interesting things, right? For example, I teach the Silva method and a key aspect of the Silva method is imagery therapy. So I, I had a video I put out on YouTube on how I healed my skin with my mind. And that video got really, really, really popular in the Miss Universe and Miss World circuits. So I've had several Miss Universe from, from, from various countries uh, write to me and say, I followed what you did in that video and I healed my skin. Because obviously if you are taking part in the beauty pageant, you, you're gonna need flawless skin. And uh, when I first created that video a few years ago, I was a little bit self-conscious because it seemed too much to say that your mind can heal your skin. But today it's actually studied by science and there's a term for it, it's called psychodermatology. Feel free to Google psychodermatology. But it shows that so much about what we believe about our body we can literally manifest. And so that's why I'm curious, Danette, about, because every time I see you, you look more and more and more beautiful. Oh and you, man, thank you. We've known each other for almost 10 years, right? But you seem to defy aging. And so I'm curious, are there beliefs? Are there aspects of your body that you just have chosen to believe counter to what society says. Yes, absolutely. And I, you know, there's a coin and I don't, I'm not going to say I coined it. I'm not sure where I got it, but it's like why identity, like my idea, my identity and my identity. So what you have to really look at, how am I identifying myself? And a lot of times, like, I'm just going to speak for women. It's like, I'm a mom. Um, I'm over 40. And then your brain starts to pick an image that you basically imprinted on yourself 
of what a typical mom over 40 with children looks like. So for me, I've gone back and gone, okay, actually my identity, I'm, I'm a sexy lean body that looks like a 20 year old. I say this to myself and every night before I go to sleep, I say, I am at a beautiful bio state of a 28 year old. I am moving and operating in this powerful bio state every day. My skin is looking better. My body's getting leaner and tighter. I say this every single day. Okay. So, so that, that's a really powerful affirmation. And I've heard that from multiple people. Linda Goodman spoke about in her, in her early books, like sun signs and star signs. She was a famous 1980s uh, um, uh, mystic. She spoke about something similar. She said, one of the most important things we have to do is before we go to bed, state, use a statement or visualize yourself getting younger. So I'm curious about your statement. Will you repeat that for us one more time? Well, I say I am at the most vibrant, healthy bio state of an, a 28 year old. I'm moving and feeling and looking like a 28 year old. I am at the most vibrant bio state of a 28 year old and looking and feeling and moving like a 28 year old. I love that. <laughs> Why do you pick the number 28? Well, it used to be like 24 and because you have to believe it, you have to, it has, there has to be an element of belief. I actually believe there's another book in my mind around this idea and concept of belief, belief for healing, belief for money, belief, belief is everything. So if I've kind of, I've gotten older since I started staying in this statement, right? So I'm like, okay, 28 feels, feels within a good belief system for me. Um, it may go to 34 when I'm 50, who right. knows, but I'm going to just keep really moving in that what feels really in true resonance for me. And it's so fascinating. You, I say 28, but now I realize I have a lot of friends, close friends, hot, sexy friends that are all 28. I think that's fascinating. I probably subconsciously choose 28 year olds to be my friend because they're a reflection of what I want to see. Oh, that is so interesting. That, that is intriguing. <laughs> now, now, there are studies that show that we are the sum of the people closest to us, right? If you have friends who are fit, you become fit. You have friends who are obese, you're more likely to become obese. Um, so could it also be that there is a, there's a virtuous circle happening here because you are in the bio state of a 28 year old, you're also attracting 28 year olds, which in turn help you stay in that bio state. It must be. I just, just realized it now. Cause I've had my husband go, why are your friends so hot? Like you have the most <laughs> beautiful friends. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why my friends are so beautiful, but now I'm wondering if I'm just trying to mimic subconsciously the mirror of what I'm wanting to see. Um, they're beautiful humans. Like to me, they have these beautiful hearts, but they're also aesthetically very beautiful people. <laughs> so, so, so here are some affirmations I repeat, okay, to, to myself before in the morning when I wake up. Um, so I use the lofty questions approach by uh, the mystic Christy Marie Sheldon, who's uh, one of our Mind Valley teachers. Rather than state it as an affirmation, we state it as a question to our subconscious. So I say, why does my body heal itself as I sleep? Why am I getting younger, sexier, and healthier every week? Why do I have the fit muscular body of an athlete? So these are some statements that I repeat. And again, feel free to, to borrow them. But what I found is, as I've repeated these statements, it also influences the beliefs in my brain. Today, I um, um, woke up early. Uh, because I'd set an intention to go to the gym and it was raining and it's freaking cold outside. And I woke up and I'm like, God, I didn't sleep well. Um, I Maybe I should give myself 20 minutes more in bed. But because my identity is, why do I have the fit muscular body of an athlete? Athletes wouldn't be staying in bed. Athletes don't dread working out. So I, I put on my raincoat. I got in the damn taxi. I went to the gym. I got, I got wet walking to the walking halfway to the gym, but I got my workout done, even though I just didn't feel like it in the morning. And so there's a theory here from James Clear that when you take on these beliefs, they actually shift your identity. And the best way to develop new behaviors is identity shifting. Yeah. And so uh, James Clear talks about it in Atomic Habits. So it seems that, you know, it's not just manifesting, but there are psychological behavioral conditioning principles at play here. But ultimately, it's about taking on the new belief. Maybe you don't believe in manifesting. Maybe you don't believe that your mind can actually influence your skin to get clearer. 
But for sure, if you've read the book Atomic Habits, which has been in the bestseller list for almost two years now, you are changing your, your behavior at a, at a very intrinsic level when you take on these new beliefs. Yeah, I agree. It's like you basically brought up identity. That's like, I always ask, what's my identity? Like, what's my purpose? Like, what am I, why am I doing this? And, and I love how you asked a question because there's right. so much power in why am I so fit? Why am I an athlete? Why do I have a body of an athlete? You know, and then it just moves you in those actions. I, I love that. And, and, and there's one more thing I think is really worth looking at. It is breaking the preconceived notion of what it means to get older. Many men, many women have an, have an idea in their head of what their body is supposed to look like at certain levels. So for example, um, when I first moved to Estonia, okay, I, 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 used to be, I used to have an Estonian wife um, and I had two children with my former Estonian wife. Now, I remember in my culture, in Indian culture, after a woman delivers, their body typically does not rebound. It's just an accepted part in my culture. Since I was a kid, I would see that in my aunts, I would see that in, in, in people in my family. After a woman became a mother, her body would not rebound back to its initial state. Um, and uh, very often the body would get progressively uh, worse. In my, in my family, there's a history of obesity. But in Estonian culture, um, I remember my Estonian wife, in four months, she was back to her, pre, uh, her weight before pregnancy. And it wasn't just her, it was all of her friends. Um, most of the women who work in our office in Estonia are mothers. All of them are in the most incredible shape even though many of them are approaching 40, the cultural zeitgeist here is different when it comes to pregnancy. And, and I believe that there is something there. If we hold a belief in our mind that after I deliver, I'm, never, I'm gonna be, my body is gonna be ruined, or after I hit 40, I'm gonna have um, a, a belly, or when, as, as I raise kids, I'm gonna develop a dad bod, that becomes true for us. Yeah, it's absolutely true. So, so what are some of the beliefs that you've taken on, Danette, that you would suggest that we start to, what would you say are the myths that we should discuss, discard, and the new beliefs on health that we should absorb as we age and as we hit these, these milestones? Yeah, you know, and I want to say that, um, obviously, I started in this realm with health because this is where my business started, but these, these principles work for everything, literally, like, from money to purpose, to having good times, to the friends that you have, to how amazing your sex is. Like, honestly, all of these principles work in all the dimensions. So you can decide what area do I need to fine tune? And, and that's what I've literally done. I've used these principles for my business, for my relationships, for my sex life, for everything, right? Because this, this is a big deal. Um, so when it comes to health, because you are asking like myths. So once again, it, I know for some people, it's a big thing to swallow and I'm super fascinated with this concept. So I've, I feel like I've been able to take the water hose pretty well now, but it's, it's un really understanding that whatever you believe will happen, truly. Obviously, I take on another approach to just believe. I also think there are fundamental laws involved. So for example, I'm not going to eat Crisco and, um, you know, really harmful, toxic foods that we actually know are man-made, right? I'm not going to go and do that and think my mind can counteract it. I think there's an element, just like with business, there's elements of work and there's elements of frequency, right? And that I actually always have this quote that your frequency is more important than your strategy. And what I mean by that is the energy and the belief that you hold and the level of frequency inside your system being turned on to joy, turned on to happiness, turned on to love is actually going to be the catalyst for your ultimate growth. And so let's talk about this frequency of love, joy within your body. How many people listening have gone on vacation, had like the most coolest vacation, you loved the people, the art, the culture, and you're eating pasta, you're eating croissants, you're eating whatever you want and you come home and you're like, I lost weight or I didn't even gain any weight and I ate all this stuff because your frequencies was turned on to love, to joy, to curiosity. And so that happens, right? Whereas if you go on a vacation where you feel a little, oh, like I'm so tired, the people are draining, it's not, you do tend to gain weight. The same goes for in your life. So 
you can have strategies, which is you should eat healing foods. You, you really should get into movement every single day. These are fundamental principles, but the frequency you hold. So loving the body that you live in, truly showing up and looking at yourself, no matter where you're at on the scale, no matter where you're at in your genes, no matter what you see externally, choosing to really love that you've got these two legs, these two arms, this heart, this voice, this head that you get to love and that gets to move and operate in this world. And when you start to love it, I always say it's like loving yourself lean. And, and it's like loving yourself so much that you're turning that dial on that frequency and it makes it easier for the weight and the not the toxins and all the non-essential things to fall from your body, the non-essential people to fall from your life for the things that you were doing in your business that kept you stuck. Whereas you fall, they fall away so that you can get into that flow and that magnetism of the abundance. I love that. So, so again, this may sound um, spiritual, but a lot of this has now been proven by science. If you go to psychologytoday.com, there's an article that you guys can search for. It's called, Does Guilt Make You Fat? I'm pasting the article here for our live audience. And, and basically, what, what the article suggests is, if you feel guilty about binge eating, you actually slow down your metabolic rate. Yeah, absolutely. Or you're, you're putting judgment, like you're right. saying, this is such a bad... I'm eating so bad, or I hate the I hate the term. Um, what is it called? Uh, a cheat day, a cheat right. day. That term already psychologically in your system means that you're a cheater. It means that you're doing something that's bad. Just say I'm having a that's free it. day. I'm right. having a free day. Who which, cares? <laughs> that's why in WildFit, which is Mind Valley's nutrition program, there is no cheat day. There is no need for a cheat day. The very concept of a cheat day is actually bad. And diets that have cheat days um, typically have a higher rate of failure because they are not paying attention to the belief system. What does a cheat day tell you? It tells you that you that it's so painful that you got to cheat, right? Yeah. Totally. Um, totally. Okay, so, so here's another article for you guys. So what I'm trying to do, Danette, is I'm, I'm ensuring that everything we talk about, there's scientific evidence. I, I want the mind that. I love that. that really bring in science. So we were talking about mind over skin. We were talking about feelings and how they improve our health. This is another study. I just pasted it there for everyone. You can find it if you're listening on the podcast. If you're interested in psychodermatology, mind influencing skin, um, firstly, there's a video where I teach you how to do this. Go to YouTube, type in vision, creative visualization, and then vision, creative visualization for healing. You'll find it there. If you want to read the scientific evidence for this, there was a study published in 2011 by Professor Jeffarani, and you can find it in psychiatrictimes.com. Uh, search for psychiatrictimes.com psychodermatology. The study is called When the Mind and Skin Interact. Okay, so we've talked a lot about how our mind, our beliefs, influence our skin, aging, influence our metabolic rate. Now, Danette, let's talk about the next one. Let's get a little bit more mystical. Let's talk about love. Mm. Can we? You, can our minds and our beliefs influence the people that we attract in our life? Now, I believe this is true. In fact, one of Mind Valley's newest programs is called Calling in the One. It's based on the hit book by Catherine Woodward Thomas. That program is going to be released uh, early 2022. But I'd love to know your thoughts. How do you manifest love, love, sex, um, uh, dating, beautiful relationships into your life? Yeah, I just created a program that launched not too long ago. It was a huge hit. It was called the 21 Day Attract Your Soulmate Challenge. And the idea was not that there's just one soulmate out there. So I want to clear that up. It was that, that you could find this person that literally lights you up so that you step fuller into the purpose and the true essence of who you are. And, and to me, that's the purpose. Because if you decide to match up with somebody, a lover, a partner, marriage, whatever, you either are moving in the trajectory of your true soul's call, or they're a massive distraction. You can't even really, I mean, there is really, it's pretty cut and dry. And so just really wanted to help people around this path of really getting into these powerful relationships that are going to help them step even more into their purpose and their joy. So, okay. So what I feel about this, so I, it was a whole three phased program. And the first phase was really around, cause there's all different phases when it comes to attracting a soulmate, when it comes to that energy and that frequency, in my mind, the first one is really understanding what do you truly desire getting 
out of the idea of what society has taught you, what you should have or want or all of that. Once again, it's the same thing about health. You know, society tells us a certain person should look a certain way at a certain age. We have to start to get to the fundamental bottom of that and go, is this even actually true? And so the same goes with relationships. What is actually something you desire? And getting into that, then what you want to do is work on your own, once again, your frequency, which is your ultimate dial of love for self. You will only see the reflection and attract the reflection of what you actually believe for yourself. So that worthiness has to be literally at the forefront. What is the belief system you have around what you deserve to be your reflection? And what is that belief you have on yourself? So I take people through really deep healing around trauma in your past, um, around relationships who might have told you things like you're not smart, you're not cute, you're, you're, you're fat, whatever the story is. And, and healing that trauma, because if you don't, you're going to continue as an opportunity to keep bumping into that invitation for you to heal that trauma, which will show up in more relationships that trigger that trauma. So that's the first thing. And then the third part is really using energy and calling in that person after you've healed the, the trauma. So it starts with healing our own trauma. And this trauma could be whatever is pushing away love from our life. I am not worthy or all men, all women are cheaters or things like that, right? Which we, which we pick up, which we pick up from our childhood. Um, so many kids see their parents divorce and it embeds in them these destructive ideas of what a relationship is about. Absolutely. So the first step is healing your trauma. Then the second step is, could you clarify that? Well, so the first step is understanding what you really want. Second step, healing the trauma. And then the third step, I take them through a really powerful visualization and, and really calling and seeing and using energetics to bring that person in. The reason you have to clear the trauma though is because you will call in that trauma. And that's what a lot of people are doing is they're using these ideas of manifesting or visualization, meditation, but they're still calling in their trauma. So I really believe that that second phase is the hardest, it's the deepest, but it's the most fundamental when it comes to that person coming into your life that actually really catapults you to that next level. Okay, that visualization sounds really, really, really cool. I'm going to have my team. So we feature uh, select visualizations on our app. We just launched a new feature on the Mind Valley app, free meditations. Every day we provide a free meditation. Then that lets, I'm going to have my team reach out to you. Let's see if we can maybe get a recording of that. And in turn, we'll mail for your book. Oh, that'd be amazing. I would love that. Yeah, I'll so take we'll get that visualization to all our listeners. In the meanwhile, just download the Mind Valley app already starting today. There's a free meditation every single day. You will see it on the app. Okay. And we're going to get the next meditation on calling in your 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 soulmate your love we're going to make that uh, available for you guys as well so so Danette, let's go on to the third aspect of manifesting money <laughs> you've built three three um massive businesses and when i say massive i mean i know i know one of your businesses um, I know, I know the revenue it was doing, it was freaking huge, like maybe the top 1% of all personal growth businesses out there. How are you manifesting money? What, what is that secret? That was a big one for me. That was where I really had to strip away belief, old paradigms, belief systems. So I grew up in a family that was, didn't have a lot of money. We probably went out to eat twice when I was growing up. Um, so money also was not only not prevalent growing up, but also I was being told that people that had a lot of money were greedy, kind of snobby, like that was the belief system that I grew up with. And so I really dig deep on removing a lot of this trauma. And I call it trauma because it wasn't even true, right? Because it was the, my belief system that was it subconsciously lodged in my DNA that I had to clear out. So what I did, and you guys, this is why I love this work is because people could say, oh, you had the right connections. You just know business. And it's like, yes. And I would not be where I am today with three, eight figure businesses if I had not done this money mindset work. And I have to say that 100% because people have me speak on business all the time. And I'm like, can we talk about the metaphysical for a hot second versus my funnels? Because these funnels wouldn't be here without this deeper work that is I, so key. 
I, I believe that. I'm so glad you said that because I see, I see you speaking at so many digital marketing conferences on how, because you've built three times, you've built businesses that exceeded 10 million in revenue. And I can tell you that is freaking hard. It took me, what, 10 years to get to that 10 million mark for Mind Valley. You've done it three times. And I love that you, you always say, can we talk about the metaphysical? That, that's what I want to uh, ask you about. But yeah, I yeah. also noticed that you're a philanthropist. You have given away $5 million to humanitarian efforts around the world. Is that correct? Yeah. Um, you know, here's my belief system on that is that if we're going to talk about energy, Right. And we're going to talk about if we really believe in this concept. And for me, I can believe it. Like I can take on these concepts, but it's like when I really feel it in my cells and I take on this meaning. So for me, I, I come from this belief system that I'm going to give away 10% of everything that I make to wow. organizations every single month. So that 10% is given out to the world. And I'm thinking of like organizations that are going to do well with it. And so it's a whole variety of different things because I believe where much is given, much is expected. And so for I me, that's that. an energetic play. Danette, yeah. you are such an ama- you're such a beautiful soul. That, that's amazing. Five, I, do, I know very few people who have donated $5 million straight up to humanitarian efforts around the world. Well, I, I think that if we all just gave it a chance, even if you're only making like $10,000 and do 10% of it and give it to others and give it to good things that are going to help other people, you will get it back, I believe, tenfold. I really do. I believe that that concept will come back to you. It doesn't matter if you're making $1,000, $10,000. This is something I teach my children. I don't care what your revenue earning is. Give 10% of it away. Share, give it and serve other people. That, that's really that, that that's really fascinating. Uh, so I would love to get your top three tips on manifesting wealth. Okay, let me let me because there's a lot of them. Let me. Talk I know you probably have a lot, right? I mean, you, you've written a whole book on it, um, <laughs> embrace abundance. But give yeah, us- totally. Okay, so the first one is really understanding this core belief, subconscious belief around if you were to make a lot of money, who does that mean you are? Because a lot of people are afraid to make a lot of money because they're like, who am I then? Like, oh my gosh, am I going to have friends? Am I going to be a, a snob? Am I going to be this or that, right? So really under, like, good, getting down to the nitty gritty of, okay, if I have a lot of money, who am I? And who am I not? And, all, and, and really getting to this belief system so that you are worthy, you deserve to have money. So that's going to take some work. There's a lot of books out there on that, but it's well worth it. So that was my first step. The second step is once you have a belief system that, yeah, I can be a great steward of a lot of money and I deserve this because here's the deal. Businesses, yeah, I actually think business is a lot simpler than everything else. Personally, I feel like I could build a lot of eight figure businesses that might sound so conceited, but I just feel like it success leaves clues. And I feel like I can just take business ideas and like, and create it like that to me, it's just working on my belief systems and my worthiness around how many can I have, how many can I have? Um, and cause you can delegate a lot of people with your visions. <laughs> so this says, so that's that. And then the third is like really holding that vision because the truth is when it comes to business, you're going to get knocked down a thousand, 10,000 times. You're going to have so many moments where you're going to have to pivot. You're going to have to question why you're doing it. So for me, every day I get into, this is a non-negotiable for me. And I have non-negotiables because they're non-negotiables. And I think this is what moves the needle forward. Um, I visualize the outcome as if it's happening every single day. And this is not a new concept. Most people are talking about the power of visualization. I always know that my body, my connections are going to move to the direction of what I can see. And so I'm always holding that vision so that when that employee says this, or if I get told something or I get shut off from Facebook or shut off from Google, I know the vision. I know it's just a moment in time and that will shift. And there will be a new moment that's going to get me to that vision. And so that's, I think, the last component that's the most important as well. Oh, I love that. Could you, uh, could you quickly summarize the, the three for us? The first so- one is what are my, what's my story around okay. money? Who am I if I make a lot of money? And, and who am I not, right? So understanding that clearing any blocks that you have. So then going, once you understand that, then clearing any of the money stories, Clearing it out, clearing it out. That's the deeper work. 
And then third, once you've cleared out, then you start to, and you can do them all simultaneously, set the vision. Why are you doing this first? What the why identity, once again, why do you want this vision? And really holding true to that why and then seeing it and visualizing every day. This is the thing. I don't think people visualize every day. I think they have a vision one day. They might write it down, which is beautiful. But I, I go out in nature personally. I do this in nature. I harness the energy of nature and I visualize where I'm going. And I do this every day. I visualize how I look. I visualize where I'm going. I visualize my sex. I visualize my relationships. I visualize it all on that walk. I love that. I love that. That is such an interesting idea. Now, do you do that? So every single day you go, as you take a walk, you set intentions through visualization of these different dimensions of your day. Yeah. Okay. So there is, there is, there's, you visualize how you want your relationship with your partner to un unfold that day. I visualize the power of my children. Like I see my kids in their ultimate power. So I do one for my kids. I see the kind of friendships I want and feel into the kind of friendships I want. I see, I see into the businesses or the impact I'm making. I call it impact or my purpose, but it's disguised like a business. I see that. I see my health. And for me, passion is a really important thing. I, I like passion in life. So I see things that light me up that are a passion thing for me. I think passion is also what keeps people looking younger. So lots of good passion. So I see that kind of stuff. Wait, wait, as well. When you say lots of good passion, is that like cold word for sex? What, what it do can you... be, but it's also like travel, like anything that right. lights me up is, is what I'm like, where I want to be. Mm, right. I like that. I like that. I, I, I like the, the segments, how you've divided your life into segments and you set an intention for every segment every single day. Yeah. So just want to give a big shout out, Danette, thank you so much for being with us. This was such an interesting conversation. Um, I, I love bringing on um, people who are friends, people whom I deeply respect, because, you know, like, I, I know so much about you, I have so much admiration for you, I wanted to draw on some of the magic that I've seen you create in the world and help in some way to, to, to understand what's going on in that, that incredible mind of yours. So thank you for, for, for sharing that. So much respect for you. Congratulations on the new book. Uh, so proud of you for being able to give away $5 million to charity for building three businesses that were in their eight figures. And I cannot wait for you to be sharing more of your gifts to the world. So the next new book is out. It is called Embrace Abundance. You'll be uh, able to get it on Amazon soon. You can also... Um, follow Danette on her website, danettemay.com. And Danette, what's your Instagram? Uh, it's the Danette May. So Facebook and Instagram is the Danette May. Perfect. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Danette.